Okay, so let's just jump into it. So we met on vacation. Mm -hmm. I was with my mom. I was we, with the homie. We were taking a Mother's Day trip and we actually got there the same day, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't see each other. Well, I didn't see her. She saw me. I saw him. Yeah. I saw him. So, okay, we got there the same day. This was in Cabo, Mexico. Mm-hmm. And we got there and we're just, you know, exploring. I see him and his friend. You know what? I didn't see you until the next day after we got there. I, I, we came, we settled in, we went to like this little, um, the little hangout area. There was like, it was an all-inclusive resort. So there was this big pool and then there was a smaller pool that was like looking out into the ocean. And, um, the next day when we had like a full day of just stuff to do, um, that's when we saw each other. Well, you saw me. That's what I'm saying. You saw me first. Yeah, I did see him first. Okay, yes. I did see him first. I saw him and he was with his friend. And I was with my mom. Now I'm just repeating myself. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. So I was in the pool doing water aerobics with my mom. I was like, let's get this workout in. We're drinking. We're having fun. We need to burn some calories. And Jamal was over in the other friend with it or the other pool with his friend. And I saw him from a distance and I was like, oh, I should go talk to him. Like he looks really good. And so I, you know, go over to this little adult pool where he is and I'm so nervous. I'm like, no, it's not my time to talk to him. <laughs> like, oh, I need to walk away. And then so I did. And I just went back over and I'm like, you know what? If he's still there the next day, I will talk to him or we will meet. Something will happen. And so I go back to sleep in my room. He does the same. And then the next day we come out to the pool and I intentionally see him at this pool the, the first day. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit there this day. So I'm like, mom, let's sit here today. And we put our little stuff down and it's super early in the morning. And this guy comes to sit next to me and we're just having conversation. We're talking and he's telling me he's here with a friend and his friend is getting married. <laughs> oh boy, this is where it gets interesting. And so I'm like, oh, that's great. Congratulations to your friend. That sounds like a fun time. And then shortly, a couple hours later, Jamal, he comes over and sit ne sits next to his friend. And I'm like, this yeah. is your guy. friend. Yep. That's that him. Me. He's engaged. <laughs> him. He's going to get married. Instantly heartbroken instantly just like oh i thought this you know we might have a chance he looks so good and you know he just seems so nice but i'm not gonna go there i'm like nope he's engaged like let's just have conversation all of us including my mother and so we start to have conversation and i'm like really liking him based off of his answers and based on just you know the vibe or whatever you know is going on between us between us all really we're all having conversation and then the next day or that day we were just kind of call it quits it's getting late they're going out somewhere and i'm going back inside yeah but you know, we should give some context between what was going on before the trip. Um, we should. I think we should figure out a way to like tell our stories at the same time. Because you not coming up to me in the pool that day was big, was huge for me specifically. Because when, when I was 
looking out into the water like that was my moment of just getting away and finally i'm here in cabo away from all of chaos all of the chaos that was back at home and so when you kind of were like swimming over and like oh i think he's cute you know i want to talk to him i was like no no don't do it don't come over here because i'm instantly just x you out i just <laughs> here for god right now um and to just get away get away from life and um and then that's really what happened you like swam away and i was like yeah i felt oh. in my spirit like this was not the right time like don't like just go over there and interrupt their conversation i was like I, if we're gonna meet we're gonna meet naturally yeah and so yeah i didn't thankfully yeah thankfully because that would have been the immediately x um and then yeah i walked over and the next day and you were sitting there talking to andrew and i'm just like oh, God, come on drew what are you doing Whoa, we're giving names. Ah, uh, yeah. My bad, Drew. My it's bad. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah. And so I sit down and he's talking to you guys. And, um, well. Well, okay. So we're talking about, like, because obviously he's engaged. So for us to even say that this ended in marriage, they need to have some context between your engagement yes relationship so they were talking about my engagement at the time and so i got there and i sat down and um yeah yeah i'm engaged um obviously i'm not going to tell some complete strangers that uh there was some happiness between me and my fiance at the time and um leaving to go to cabo we had gotten this huge argument and so and in my heart of hearts, I was I was done. I was gonna go home and um, and break off the engagement. Um, that was kind of like where my head was at. Uh, um, just really just trying to figure out from God, like, what do you want me to do? If this is a relationship that you want me to stay in, then I'll stay in it. Um, but I I need a sign. I need something to either take me into this relationship or get me out of this relationship because it's just not working for me. Um, and. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about all the stuff that went on, but um, that's where I was, um, leaving and um, getting there and meeting these two strangers, her, her and her mom. I wasn't going to divulge all of that, but they were talking about my engagement. So I was like, yeah, I'm engaged um, and let's just kind of just leave it at that. And I think she kind of picked up on that a little bit of like, OK, like it's not going the best. Um, but the way, uh, our conversation developed in Cabo, um, was not anything foul. It wasn't anything, um, too. Okay, we'll get it. We'll get into it. Okay. We're not right. there yet. We're not there yet. And also bad. some context behind, I, at this time, I was single, but kind of still, entertaining an ex entertaining an ex and um really actively praying like this time my relationship with god i would say was just basically starting over again like i was you can kind of see from my testimony video i was a christian and then went through some things and that was when i was renewing my relationship with him i was actively praying that god would send me my husband when I was ready I definitely didn't think it was gonna be that soon I thought it was gonna be like five years maybe Man. ten but I was actively praying for it and something that I specifically asked for is that this man was like my dad I just honored my dad I loved him he's such a great guy and he's always been just such a good influence in my life and always there for me and so I was like has to be like my dad and then so we start getting through different conversation and everything. I'm asking him questions. Um, at this time, I unfortunately, it was kind of like in the zodiacs and stuff. So I was like, when's your birthday? And he tells me it's literally the same day as my dad's. Yeah. February 19th, if you guys want to give me a birthday gift, that is when my birthday is. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. And so I'm automatically like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> this is a sign yeah. but I'm like also 
I'm not thinking too much of it because I know that God would never send you another woman's man. Like, that's just not God. That's not what he does. And I was like, no, like, God's not going to send me my husband who's engaged. And so time goes by. We kind of um, exchange numbers at one point just because we were all planning to, like, go into town and hang out me, his friend, me, my mom, and, um, oh, I don't remember her name. Her name's Alexandra. Alexandra, Alexandra sorry if you're watching. I'm sorry. And, um, yeah, we met another, another mom and daughter kind of duo. We're probably honestly gonna have to make, remake this. This is, like, all over the place, but it's I fine. Think we're let's, doing great. Let's just keep going. We're doing phenomenal. Leave all this in here. All of it. Okay. <laughs> So that next day, after the day that we come face to face, we yeah. meet, we um, we start, okay, wait, maybe we should talk about, we need to, maybe. Texted you what, the next day? Okay, so he, he, we exchanged numbers, we were talking that night, and we were actually going to meet up the night that we met. Yeah. We were going to meet up the night that we met, but I, I, um... So I'm vegan, and in Mexico, it, at this inclusive resort, it was pretty hard to get, you know, vegan, vegan options. Food. So I ended up having some dairy and something, and it made me super sick. And so I'm in here, like, real sick. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can't come out and meet you. Like, I'm sorry, which is probably a good thing. Like, that's probably God, like, no. Um, something, you know the purest intentions we had but who knows like where that could have led if sure. we allowed that temptation to be there sure. and so we we didn't thankfully and then the next day we saw each other again and um this day we ended up making plans later to go into town the town we went into is san jose which we actually live in san jose now which is crazy san jose california san jose Mexico. Mexico. San Cabo. No, Cabo and the city is called San Cabo San Lucas? Yeah, that's where San Jose was in the city. Never oh, okay. mind. It was a city. It was a city in Mexico. <laughs> and so we end up going into town, all of us. We take this taxi and we're just like having dinner and I like can just feel myself. I really like this person. I'm like having these feelings and I'm just like this isn't right because he's engaged and so I'm really relying on God at this point to like make it known that like either I need to go this way or this way because it just was something that you just can't you can't discern on your own and it's just really it's not unexplainable <sighs> But it is at the same time, if you've never experienced it, um, again, I was coming off of the state of like, God, you need to show me, like, you need to show me what direction I need to take. Um, and I think before, like, I even sat down with you and Andrew and your mom, I was completely waking up, going out to those benches and reading my word. I was um, reading a book that I was currently um, still haven't finished. I need to finish it by T.D. Jakes. Um, God turns pressure into power. And man, was I feeling pressure. Like, ridiculous amount of pressure. Um, and to kind of fast forward to what she was talking about being in San Jose and going out to dinner. Um, I was completely just awestruck by her. I could not take my eyes off of her for the life of me. There was no, um, there was no strength that I could muster up to like not be captivated by her. I just couldn't help it. And I felt so awkward about it because her mom <laughs> was sitting right in front of me. We were at this table and she, Hannah's like next to her mom. And so I know her mom is looking at me, but I cannot stop staring at her. And I'm just like, Lord help me, you know, and um, but when it's something is God's plan, you can't not go against God. It's literally impossible, you know. It, in in sin, it tells you the Bible tells you that God always gives you a way out. 
um, there was no way out with this. I'm telling you, there was absolutely no way out in this. I, I was praying, um, especially when I got home, and we'll talk about that later, about um, my time and my prayer and fasting about uh, this situation that I was in, but there was no getting out of this. I, I felt so strongly about her, and um, maybe you want to talk about a little more when we got back from dinner. Yeah. Yeah. So when we got back from dinner, we ended up deciding to go on a walk on the beach that his friend also went on. Yes, yes. And so Drew we, was there for yeah, ninety nine percent of it. <laughs> we had maybe uh, 20, no, 20, no, no, 30 no. minutes alone. We probably yeah, thirty minutes alone is probably the max yeah. that we had. Yeah. And so after this walk on the beach, we ended up deciding to like there's these. Two big hammocks that are like um, on the sand and you can kind of stay out um, and look at the stars or whatever so that's what we did yeah. and we just kind of sat there and um, ironically I was talking to his friend more than him like we were having a full-on like therapy session yeah. like real talk we were just going in about really really more his life and like understanding him getting like different perspective my life my friends life. yeah getting different perspective on um, things that he was going through and I was kind of just speaking on what I thought about it even maybe like putting some advice here and there but really just having like genuine conversation he's pretty much stayed silent for like a lot of this time and just like because I was under pressure <laughs> I was feeling it. He was thinking. I was. I was. I was thinking a lot. And so it gets about like one, maybe even two in the morning. And um, his friend is like, I'm exhausted, guys. I'm going inside. No, 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 wait. You can't. No, you can't skip over that. Oh. When she was talking to my friend Andrew, uh, wait, your name's already out there, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, when she was talking to him about uh, his life and. Uh, the things that she's experienced and how it's related to him. I was completely hearing just the Holy Spirit speak through her and speak how she views um, her life and how her heart is. And it was her heart that really was just um, hitting me left and right while I was sitting there. And I was thinking like, man, I came out here praying like, God, if I'm going to get into my uh, engagement then you're gonna have to show me but if if there's another way you're gonna have to reveal that and I'm listening to her heart speak about how she views her life and, and the things that she thinks are important and valuable in a relationship and I'm like man that's that's what I want and I'm literally I don't even have to tell her that because that's how she's living her life and that's what what was really that's the moment that got me that's the moment that I believed like this is the person I'm supposed to marry. Um, I think that was the moment. And she wasn't even talking to me. She was just talking. Well, she knew I was listening. Yeah. She knew I was listening um, intently. And I was listening to her heart speak. And um, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You're welcome. Um, and then after that, we decide, or we had this moment alone to where we just start to talk about um just life in general different things um i at this point i asked because like i felt like obviously he's having internal conflict if he can even be like entertaining the thought of me or anything even like sitting there having these conversations with me so i'm like asking him questions about his relationship if he's happy if like this is where he feels like he's supposed to be and yeah, I mean, you know the answer, <laughs> but, uh, um, what else? I mean, when you asked me those questions, um, there was, there was really, um, the background to those questions was really like her opening up about more on her, um, relation, relationship issues that she's had, um, things that she's never told anybody, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's another important part of the story. I had kind of a um, a secret, really, that I was kind of keeping internally that I didn't share with anybody because it was super shameful. It was something that I went through in my past that I just 
wasn't ready to reveal to my family or anybody but God had told me um, previous or prior to meeting him that the person I would tell this information to would be my husband and I just felt in my spirit that I had to tell him right then like I was literally shaking like did not even want to get any of this out but so I was nervous. like I was like, oh, God's really telling me I have to tell him this right now. So I did. And I just kind of revealed a part of my heart and a part of me that was like super, um, just super sacred inside. And so the way that he received that was so well. And I, that was almost confirmation for me in itself, but I still really needed to pray about it I really needed to have that clear confirmation from God I didn't I mean I did I, that's mentally that's what I put myself and I tried to like no I have to pray and I have to fast and I have to really um, dig deep on this um, but in that moment when she was shaking her voice was so just terrified not terrified but she was like in fear of telling this random person that she's only known for two days yeah though just like i don't know why i feel like i have to tell you this but like this is coming out of me and i'm just thinking it's the most beautiful thing in the world because she's just opening up her heart to me and i'm like wow like it's really this exists like this is all i've really wanted in my life was to experience um somebody who i can connect with on that deeper level i don't want to conversate um with just emotions and um i really want to get to the deeper root of what makes you you and i think um within two days of knowing this person uh, i got to see that and i was like okay this is obviously we're married now but yeah this is a person i wanted to marry and I tried to do it without her and immediately when I got home, I just, I couldn't, I could not, I couldn't breathe. I could not go out throughout my day without having, talking to her and it was awful, but yeah. we're not there yet. Sorry. So that night, um, you know, we just shared deep thoughts, deep conversation, and then it was getting so late. We knew we had to go back. So this very next day, like that after we talked, I'm I'm leaving in the morning, and Jamal ends up leaving the next day, Sick. and so um, we are like saying goodbye to each other this night. We literally just give each other a hug, just a a friendly hug, <laughs> um, just to be respectful. Uh, that's something that was like such good confirmation for me was because this was such like an abnormal situation, he was still so respectful of his fiance at home and wasn't gonna cross any boundaries or any lines and neither was I. I just am not that type of woman and I wouldn't want that to happen to me. So it already felt like it was crossing emotional lines, which it, it was. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we went back to our room then the next day we had breakfast together. We and his friends. Mm -hmm. Andrew was there. Andrew was there. <laughs> he was there all, yes. all the time. Yes. And um, so we had breakfast together, and then we were saying goodbye to each other. And I just so strongly felt in my spirit to that day that God was just like, "It's yours. Don't worry about it." Like. I lived in Indiana at that time and he was in California and he was like don't worry about it like I'm gonna work it out you are gonna be with him and I'm like at this point I have like so much peace and happiness like honestly peace and happiness just for the fact and I told him this that like even if we didn't get married even if we never dated or even never saw each other again I was like in such a bad relationship previous to him I was just like so overjoyed to even have confirmation that like men like him exist so I was just so thankful for even meeting him and just so grateful that for that experience alone and so yeah I was just so happy I was like on the plane telling um, I was like telling people next to me like I just met my husband <laughs> and uh, yeah we went home and back home 
things were like back to reality I had like a thought for maybe like a day or two that I was like no he's probably just gonna fix things with her like that's what most people do and you know it just is what it is I was sick I was I was terrified I, that I was never gonna see this amazing woman ever again I just did not want her to leave I was just so hurt I got home and um yeah things were crazy <laughs> things were definitely crazy yeah um i think i waited about a week to end things with um my current fiance at the time i wanted to make sure that i was uh making the right decision i wanted to make sure that i was um actively seeking proper counsel um i talked to i don't know countless people pastors um, older pastors, uh, obviously my, my parents, um, uh, there's numerous friends that I talked to and, and I have a lot of friends. And so there were a lot of people who were a little bit offended that I didn't talk to them about this, but I mean, uh, I can count on my hand how many, um, on both hands, how many people I talked to in one day about the same situation, which was emotionally draining for me. Um, but I waited about a week to end things with my, um, current fiance and then I felt like I, I had made the right decision. I was praying a lot. And then I, I let her know. I said, hey, you know, um, I think I'm going to have to stop talking to you just to really make sure that um, I have my heart in the right place. And she was completely understanding. And um, the moment she sent that text of like, you know, you got to do what's best for you. And um, I, I hope all is well. And um, just let me know. Um, how you feel after the moment she sent that text I was sitting in my prayer closet like this and I got that text message and instantly I was like what are you doing like you idiot like I knew all I wanted to do was talk to her I knew all I wanted to do was be with her from that moment on it was like God was just like, all right, when are you going to get on schedule and get on board here? Because you already know. Yeah, but I feel like that's also like that's something that is important because like we do as Christians have to properly be able to discern and deny our flesh and like lust and all these things. And that can very easily be our situation can very easily be interpreted from lust and even looking yeah. on the outside putting myself in other people's shoes like I totally get why people would be like no like um, it's a vacation fleeing or desire something that's also really important to mention is um, Jamal was resaving himself for marriage so at this point yeah. he has not had sex for two years yeah. and he's waiting for his wife so it's not something that we were like you know wanting to like meet this need or anything yeah. like that like it was really about spending your life with this person I even went to go see uh, a marriage counselor um, when I went to go see a marriage counselor I think it was like a week after and um, the one of the things they had asked me was well like how do you know this isn't a rebound and I said well um, I know this is not a rebound because a rebound is usually um, trying to replace something that you had before. And I looked at the, the counselor and I said, I've never had this before. And he kind of sat there with this look of expression of like, oh, that's a good point. Okay. Um, and I, in that moment I knew I was like, so you can't tell me that I'm replacing this woman with every other feeling in the world. Um, when I've never felt like this before on top of the fact that I've been saving myself for the past two years intentionally to give this um, part of me to the right person that was the biggest thing that I, I wanted to do um, it was a standard that I had set for rela the relationship prior to her and um, uh, it was something that I was truly seeking after and so I was I mean, I wasn't offended by people bringing that up like oh well, you're just lusting and all this other things I because I understood why they thought that way there was um, countless people that I knew who were currently having sex who were telling me that you're just lusting after this person you just want to have sex with her I'm like you have no idea the grind that I have been on to not be in your shoes so how are you gonna tell me that this is what 
it's fine, but <laughs> it's fine. But you got to be careful of the counsel that you get because the counsel that you get isn't always coming from the right place, even though they think that it, it their heart is in the right place, but their character and, and their um, what they do on the day to day. If it doesn't match what you do on the day to day, it's not going to be um, coming from a, a healthy place that's going to benefit you in, in the way that um, God wants to benefit you. He has a higher standard and a higher calling. And I was walking that. And so I knew that I could trust my discernment in yeah. this relationship. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I think that's something at this time, I would say we were unevenly yoked in some places. He was a little bit more spiritually strong. He developed this relationship where he was going to set this standard of his relationships and himself with God, um, which was ultimately what I was seeking. I just wasn't all the way there. And I also believe that's why God put us together to help strengthen me in that way. Um, but I was still praying, asking, and kind of getting confirmation from God. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Along the way that uh, this was my person. And... Yeah, I mean, he confirmed it in so many different ways. Um, I'm trying to go into different ways of confirmation. Of uh, confirmation about... Yeah. There were so many different coincidences also. Like, our moms had the same maiden name. Our moms had the same ring. Like, I, we should actually show them. Like, grab that little box right there, that butterfly one. With the promises? Yeah, in, in front oh. of the promises. So, um, we are saving up to get the ring that I want to get. So, we are wearing Jamal's mom's ring right now. And this is her ring. And this is my mom's ring. So, it's identical. literally the same ring. Yeah. So, just like little stuff like that was just like mind-blowing to us. And... Just the fact that everything started to work out. Like at first there was like fear of like, I can't afford to live in California on my own. Like if we're gonna do this, like we we need to get married and like move in together because it's it's just not an option. And God like really aligned all of that for us and made it so um, just easy for us to step into. We quickly decided like within honestly two weeks of talking to each other, we. <laughs> this was going to end in marriage. Like it's, I think it was more like a month, but... No, I got the messages. She does. I don't. But, yeah, we we just both knew, whether it was a month or two weeks, we both knew so quickly and, like, that this is where we wanted this to go and um, we felt strongly about each other in this way. Yeah. And so, at this point, we know we're going to get married. We know that... I'm going to move to California. Um, California also God put on my heart years prior that he wanted me to move there. And I was like, I can't afford it. Like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. But that also tied in because that was where he lived. Um, and then so, yeah, basically leading into marriage, we spent all this time talking. We're FaceTiming every night, like falling to sleep with each other on FaceTime, spending this time to every like... Every single yeah. night for three months straight, we yeah. fell asleep with each other on the phone. Yeah, every single night. And, you know, we're basically just working on ourselves individually to be able to come together. He's doing different counseling and areas of his life to where he needs to heal. I'm doing counseling in a different form i like to look up youtube videos and just different stuff online reading reading and like doing all that type of stuff um and so yeah basically the next time that we see each other is our wedding day <laughs> we spent a total of three days together uh in mexico and then the very next time we meet we get married yeah it's <laughs> it's pretty nuts so but that's just how strongly we felt like yeah. don't get me wrong it was scary like i think when you get something from god that is like stepping out on faith what? your heart and your head are like not matching at yeah, all yeah like you're like this is nuts like yeah. i've never done anything like this like 
but when God is like, no, like, this is the plan I have for you. This is where I want your life to go. Yeah. If you really, really put yourself out in there, like, he always, always comes through. And, you know, we're seeing that in our marriage today. So, man, always comes through. The fact that we're in the apartment that we're in. Yeah. Um, the countless times God has come through for us when we didn't have money. Mm -hmm. um, I made some bad financial situation uh, decisions, and he, I put ourselves in a rut. Well, I'm just just painting a picture. I'm not going to go into detail, but um, yeah, God def has come through so many times, and the yeah. fact that we're living where we're living is. Uh, amazing and I know he's going to continue to come through mm -hmm. but that is just a, a testament to how we had to step out on faith in something yeah. that was so terrifying yeah. I think people um, often overlook that um, that moment of stepping into the courthouse of like we're really getting ready to do yeah. this we did a courthouse marriage like just eloped yeah. and so I got off the plane that day and literally as soon as I got off the plane like we got married like went like I didn't on, hours. honestly I, I looked terrible on my wedding day like I didn't even do my hair or like my yeah I get the picture <laughs> <laughs> didn't even do my hair or my makeup well I did a little bit you know but it was just like <laughs> I mean obviously it's still cute but you know it's just like uh. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah. I mean, we just were so excited to get married, even though we were so scared and, like, had all of these different feelings. We felt like um, a marriage based on God and um, is designed for success. And that's truly the way that we felt. Yeah. And so we went to the courthouse and we got married. Like, up until this, like, point, we hadn't seen each other, like we said. We literally had our first kiss on our wedding day. <laughs> like, nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. I yeah, it, it is. That. It's crazy. Like, man, I'm I'm not that type of person normally either. Like, I'm pretty practical and uh, pretty, and you are too. Like, we're both pretty like intentional with the things that we do. We think through things, but this was just like an undeniable. Like, this is where I'm calling you. Yeah, and. Yeah, we did it. it. And yeah. now um, it's almost been a year. It'll be a year in August, obviously. But, you know, we're still learning new things as we go each and every day, learning how to better communicate and meet each other's needs. And honestly, just the amount of spiritual growth that's been between our relationship, especially on my end. I was lacking a little bit, like I said at first. But Jamal was just so patient with me and he just really let me grow in that area and get into that deep relationship without making me feel like it was something I had to hurry up and do. Um, so that alone just made me love him more. And he, he just loves me in a way that Christ would. And that was so important to me to have in a partner, in a marriage especially, um, just really feeling that different type of security. like. We could have a little argument or like a fight or whatever about the end of the day. Like I know that he's not going to leave my side and that like divorce isn't really an option for us. Like we, you know, we want to work, we want to work through it. We want to be together. Like this wasn't something that we were like, ah, oh, it doesn't work out. Like yeah. we'll get divorced. Right. <laughs> like we really, we really, really, really want to figure it out and grow together. And both of our parents have been divorced. And yeah. So we were adamant on talking about that but then those nights of staying on FaceTime yeah like, breaking those generational curses and like just just doing it making it work and yeah. um, I think that it, it really it's different when you have a relationship that is physical emotional and spiritual I really believe that you have to have all three of those things I've been in other relationships where I've had one or maybe two but like having all of those three things just allows you to connect with your partner on such a different level. Um, yeah, I think we, in Mexico, we connected spiritually without even talking to each other. Yeah. Um, and then the, the FaceTimes, it were a very emotional connection. We were exchanging words, it was very emotional. And then um, we got to have that physical on the day that we got married. I think we did it in 
the right way. Um, yeah, so. for sure. I definitely, I mean, God answering my prayer in the form of my husband, the way that he did, and like blessing me so much at that point when honestly, I didn't, I mean, none of us deserve it, but like just didn't even deserve it. I wasn't even fully like deep in my relationship with God, but he still just like was so faithful to me and his plan and that alone made me grow closer to God because I was like, he loves me so much that he wants to give me what I truly desire. Yeah. Same. Same. Um, Monday night prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Monday that's, night prayers. Yeah. That's something that has helped our relationship so much. We should make a video separately on that all together, but okay will give you like a little sneak peek basically every single Monday night no matter what doesn't matter where we are how tired we are just what we've been through even if we've had an argument that day and really don't even want to talk to each other like Monday night is just a night that we come together and we pray we he prays then I'll pray or I'll pray then he prays but we both pray and that is like our night that we feel the presence of God and like starts our week off really right gets us in just a good headspace and it, it just allows us to connect in a different way because we're incorporating those separate times we have with God together yeah it's really it Monday night prayers are lit so um, if you don't have them start it because it's fire it is fire yep but I think that's really it. Yeah. If you have any questions or anything that you would like to say, you can just comment or reach out to us personally. Underscore heroes. That's my IG. I'm gonna put it down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's it. <laughs>